My love for open fire cooking began before I knew it. I mean, I was a kid. I didn't realize it at the time, but you know, I was already being consumed with it at a young age. So it was just natural for me when I fell in love with it. Everything that we do here is by feel. You can use thermometers, but we like to teach that technique and that instinct of relying on feel with the cook. So I taught myself how to cook was by feel. It was my grandfather's cooker that I got started on. It didn't have a thermometer at all. So I would have to watch the meat, watch the color, the texture develop, and start developing my cooking instinct and technique that way. I mean, these beef ribs have been cooking for about eight hours now. Um, we pull them right before service. What we're looking for is just a nice tender beef rib. As you can see, it's really, really tender here. But when you, when you see that, that's how we know that it's done. So this is gonna be, this is gonna be a, a really delicious. I believe barbecue is magical. I mean, if any time you take raw cuts of meat and create something that turns into memories for, for our guests, I believe that there's magic in doing that. When we build our fires, we're using seasoned white oak. And the reason why I say that it's seasoned is that the oak has dried out, so it serves as a really good source, great fuel for what we're doing with our barbecue. And as you see, I got these logs right here. I mean, we have the base here, and then I have the two logs right there that's going across. We like to stack it up, kind of like a Lincoln log, just so that it has adequate airflow. Another thing that's really important for the cooking process is to have a clean, oxygen-rich fire. We can't have too many coals in here where it suffocates the fire, then what it'll do is it'll create a really thick smoke. We want it to burn with really great oxygen, which will in turn create a really nice blue smoke. The first thing that goes on is brisket. Brisket is like our longest cook. We got our whole brisket here. I mean, this brisket right here is about 16 pounds. Once we trim it and whatnot, it's, it'll probably be around maybe 11, 12 pounds. Just being here on the West Coast, tri-tip is the cut of meat that's extremely prevalent here on the West Coast. So, I mean, just to give people something different. I mean, I grew up on tri-tip and that sort of stuff. So right here we have uh, just a mixture of mustard, a little bit of Worcester. All that's gonna do is just act as a binder so our rub will be able to adhere to the brisket. And we have our, our rub here, which is pretty much just salt and pepper. We keep it simple with our rubs. We want people to taste the meats and we want it, the time and process that goes into smoking the brisket. Pat it all in, and it'll be good to go for the smokers. Brisket is pretty much what's built the house. I think people have a really great deal of respect for brisket just for the simple fact that it's, it's a labor of love. It takes a lot of time. I mean, you're talking essentially 14, upwards of 16 to 18 hours. Our briskets have been on since about 4 a.m. Um, they're not quite there yet. We're just waiting to get the right color. We're waiting for the bark to form on it. I mean, these are starting to get some really good color on them. And so right now, all I'm doing is just kind of cooling the surface temperature. A little bit of apple cider vinegar, a little bit of Worcestershire. We do that to keep it moist throughout the cooking process because they're in here for such a long time and we have the heat that's going over it. We don't want the point end of the brisket to dry out. So periodically throughout the cooking process, they'll come through and they'll just spray it just to add a little bit of moisture to it. So this is gonna cook for another maybe 12 to 13 hours. I think with Horn Barbecue, we have the opportunity to create something where we're not specifically stuck with one tradition. And I think that that kind of relates to like where we are. And with us being in Oakland, it allows us to do different cuts of meat and just have variety with the barbecue that we're offering. So the oxtail, is this, this is something that my mother used to cook all the time. She would smother the oxtails with gravy and it would be served over rice and green beans or collards or something like that. You know, my family are from the South, uh, my parents, my grandparents. Um, the foodways of the Black South, you know, provided a pathway for me to be who I am. Without those people doing what they've done and the sacrifices they made, I wouldn't be here today. A little bit of our mustard buying. All we're doing is just trying to get these coated. We're gonna coat each one. I'm using just a simple salt, pepper, onion, garlic powder, rub. You don't wanna do too much, but this is ultimately about how much that you wanna do. And this will go on the smoker and we'll cook until we get like a really rich mahogany color on it. 
These are gonna cook a little bit faster, so we run it on the top just because it runs a little hotter on the top of the smoker. In life, there's a certain measure of patience that we must all exercise. I mean, there's things that we all want to accomplish and we want to achieve. It relates to barbecue in a sense of where in order to get the product that we have, there's patience that take place within the cooking process, but then also the person that's preparing the food. And we get a result that's reflected with excellence. Our ox cells have been going for about four or five hours. And see right there, once they start to pull away from where the bone is, you see that real rich color and you can see just like how tender it is, how juicy, that's what we're going for. We're smoking it to get a really good flavor on it. And then pretty much once we do that, we kind of finish it, kind of braise it to finish it. We're gonna take those in. We'll take those in. We got our whole turkey breast here. I usually start by getting rid of the skin here. Once we have it like this, what we'll do is we'll use a little bit of our mustard bind from earlier. And we have a rub right here that's made up of salt, pepper, garlic, some paprika, a little bit of chili pepper. Our rubs, um, our rubs are different from our turkeys than they are with other meats. Um, there's a certain flavor profile that we're going for with our poultry. All of our different cuts of meat have different rubs. That's so what we're looking for here. And then this will go on the smoker. How long have they been going for? They've been going for six hours already. They're literally as far as we're gonna take them because we don't want to like over smoke them. Pretty much just making sure that they have like a nice color on it. I mean, we try to look for that kind of mahogany color on them. So once it's been smoked, it has a really great color on it. What we do is we like to finish it with butter just to give it a little bit more added flavor. Like I said, we're not worried about the turkey drying out. It'll still maintain its moisture. Once we finish it with butter, we'll take it, we'll put it in the holding cabinet, it'll be ready to go for service. So we're gonna be making our sausage here. I mean, this is our house-made hot link that we do. Um, our hot link is comprised of about 80% pork, and we mix in some of our beef trimmings as well. We'll season it with salt, pepper, paprika, and a little bit of cayenne. We have a little kick on the end of it. We don't want it too hot. We want it where people can enjoy it. But Sean does such an amazing job. It's, it's absolutely delicious, so we'll get these going. And It's about the size of the links that we like to go. I usually pull it apart, pinch it a little bit like that, get a nice roll on it, and then we'll keep coming through. And then we'll just repeat this process. Then once we do this, and we'll put them on the smoker, and then once we do that, we just do it just to get a really nice color on it. So we've already done our first smoke on the sausage. So now we're doing our last smoke on it. So once we've reached a, a, an ideal internal temperature for it, we have a nice mahogany color. It's really nice and firm. It's when we know it's time to pull off. Yeah, these are definitely ready to pull off. So we'll get those going, get them ready for service. I don't want to leave our guests waiting. What I love about barbecue and just what we're doing here in the Bay Area, I mean, we've gotten a lot of great support from the Bay Area. I mean, we have long lines and and those people that are patient with us, that appreciate our work, we appreciate them. I hope that people see like the hard work that we put in. So when they walk away from Horn Barbecue, I just want them to just be able to close their eyes, taste the hard work, the love, the patience, the passion um, th that goes into the barbecue. It's very intricate, all the fine details that make up that single bite, but I hope that people appreciate it.